We thank God for this opportunity to commemorate his death, burial, and his resurrection. We thank him for sending Jesus Christ down to show us the way. He loved us so dearly that he shed his blood for us on Calvary's cross. We thank the Lord for seeking us out. We were lost. Needing a way to be reconciled back to God the Father. Only to find out that Jesus Christ is the way. It was on that Thursday night. They had sat down in this large upper room, historically belonging to the family of John Mark. To enjoy the Passover feast. And as they sat around on pallets, eating the roast lamb, bitter herbs and spices, sauce in which the herbs were dipped, loaves of unleavened bread, and water mixed with wine. Just enjoying the feast. But that's what a feast is all about. It's about a celebration. And they were all doing well until Jesus said to them, I'm going up to Jerusalem. I will be mocked, I will be scarred, and put to death. It's not the first time he had mentioned this to them. But it has taken a while for this to resonate in their minds, in their spirits. And they said, Lord, not you. You've only been with us for three years, and now you're talking about you you're going up to Jerusalem to, to be slain. Jesus said to them, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I do not go away, then the Holy Comforter cannot come. When he comes, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And as they put away the Passover feast and just before the table was cleared, Jesus said, one of you, one of you, one of the twelve, one of you that has followed me is going to betray me. They begin to ask him questions, Lord, is it I? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do this thing? Jesus said, the one that sops with me. So they went to the bread dish and picked up a piece of unleavened bread and they went to the sopping dish and, and Judas met Jesus there. And Jesus fastened his eyes on Judas and said, what thou doest, do it quickly. The Bible said that Judas got up and ran out into the night. The other disciples thought he was going to get some more provisions. But at that point, Jesus and Jesus was the only one that knew what Judas was going to do. Jesus said, with desire, I had desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I shall not eat of it again until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. The table was clear, and the only thing left on the table was bread and the fruit of the vine. We don't have any power to change these emblems from a common 
feel spiritual use. But we recognize our God as having all power. He can bless all things. He can do all things. But fail. Deacon Frederick Douglas Anderson is going to pray for our, over our emblems at this time. To Lord, we, we come at this time, dear God, to thank you. To thank you for your many blessings and to thank you for this great day. And Lord, we come thanking you for this time of which we have come to commune, dear God, we come asking that you would touch our hearts and minds and let us examine ourselves, dear God. And if we've done something that's not right yeah. before you, Lord, I ask that we would bring it before you, well. that, Lord, that we may be cleansed from it. And, Lord, we thank you. We ask that you would bless this bread, dear God, that's to represent your broken body. Well. And, Lord, to bless the fruit of the vine that's to represent your shared blood. Mm-hmm. Dear God, to turn this from a carnal into a spiritual yeah. age, Lord God. That, Lord, that it will cleanse us. Mm -hmm. These are all blessings I ask in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The disciples were troubled. Thank you. Take this one, brother. Because their leader was leaving them. And that's when Jesus quoted those words out of the 14th chapter of John. Jesus said to them, let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, you know. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know whether thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Has any been omitted the servant of the bread? Has any been omitted the serving of the cup? Come in, my brother. This bread represents the body of Jesus, which was broken for you. I remind you, none of his bones were broken. And they would hang people on a cross. They would come by and make sure that they were dead. And the way they did that is they would break their legs. But the Bible said when they got to Jesus, he was already dead which proved that what was in the Old Testament is the truth. Let us eat together. And then this blood, fruit of the cup represents his blood that was shed for us on Calvary with 
Without the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission of sin. Let us commune together. Amen. They sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. Just before we sang this hymn, um, take this, my brother. Serve that brother in the back. This bread, again, represents the body of Jesus, which was broken for you. None of his bones were broken. John said, this is the bread that came down from heaven. He that eateth this bread shall never die. Let us eat together. This fruit of the vine... Represents Jesus' blood that was shared for us on Calvary's cross. Thank him for the shedding of his blood because without the shedding of his blood would be, there would be no remission of sin. So we give honor and praise to him for reconciling us back to the Father. Let us drink together. Amen. They sang a hymn. And they went out into the Mount of Olives. Oh, the blood, come here, my brother. Oh, the blood, the blood done signed my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done signed my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, the blood done signed my name. Oh, the blood done signed my name. God bless you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this time that you have allotted us. We pray, Lord, that we will be able to spread your word everywhere we go, that you give us opportunity. Let somebody know that you are the one and only true God. There is none like thee. Nowhere can you find anyone who can save the souls of man. It's in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Now if you're here to, out there and watching or listening in. And you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Today is a good day to be saved. Right where you are. Doesn't matter what you're doing or wh where you are. You can just speak the word. You can be in the grocery store. You can be driving down the road. If the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you, just ask him to come into your life. And he will come in. Take up residence. He'll walk with you. Talk with you. He'll lead you. He will guide you. And the good part about it, once you take up with him, he said, my father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man can pluck them out of my hand. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now henceforth and forevermore. Let all the saints of God say amen. 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 Go in peace. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We are in, indeed happy that uh, you're here to, with us to share in Passion Week of Christ into the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ on the cross. We praise God for such a wonderful gift. He left his riches and glory, came down to earth that mankind might be reconciled to God. 
we were lost in sin. Because of Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. We needed to get back to God. God so loved us, he sent Jesus Christ in human flesh to live with us, to die for us, and to be resurrected for us. And now he is alive forevermore. Let us listen to Pastor Ronald Paul as he takes a short journey from Monday through Thursday telling us about what Jesus did. Amen. First, we will have a selection from our musician at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. All because of Jesus. together and give some praise <coughs> to our Lord Pastor Ronald Paul 
Woodville Baptist Church, Woodville, Virginia, will come at this time. You can take my word for it. If you don't want to cheat and read what happens on Sunday morning, just know this, it's going to be a glorious day. Amen. Uh, we hang our faith on, on basically um, one week as recorded in the Bible. Matter of fact, uh, half of the book of the Gospel of John uh, records this week. One third of Matthew, one third of, of Mark records this week. So that tells us that this week is just as important as, as our day-to-day -day lives of getting up and going to bed. This, the, 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 today I have the task of, of taking us on a journey, uh, a journey down to this following the footsteps of Jesus as we, we go and head towards uh, the cross itself. Um, I know um, uh, in my journey, I never could figure out as a child uh, why I was called Good Friday. And um, I had to be right. So in my mind, uh, Jesus being put to death on a Friday afternoon is not a Good Friday. I troubled my Sunday school teacher, my mother, my father, and even the pastor because I had to be right. I know y'all know somebody like that <laughs> in your life. My thing is, and what it boiled down to that why it was Good Friday, as I got older and understood what was really going on, I understood that it was a Good Friday because it was good for us. It might not look good for Christ at the time, but it was good for us. Because I began to understand that, and I want us tonight, uh, whenever this is view, aired or viewed, not to look at it as, as uh, uh, just another holiday, or a reason for us to get together, or, or for you to see another Christian service. I want you to look at it and remember, as each day goes by, and as each word is, is, is preached to you uh, that Jesus utters on the cross. Not to look at it as, as, a, as a celebration or an event, but take time to look at, at it from the perspective of God's love for each one of us. Because I began as when until you see what actually uh, uh, the basis of all of this is, then you miss the entire meaning of Passion Week itself. You'll miss and under, misunderstand what uh, Jesus was doing on the cross, and you'll surely miss the understanding of the resurrection itself. You see, Romans reminds us, and just to give you a, a baseline to work off of, as we work Monday through Thursday. Um, uh, what, what Paul had to say. For scarcely one uh, would die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, when you look at it from the love of Christ, even as we, as we look at, at what happens and we're getting ready to celebrate our uh, by the time you see this, you have already celebrated Palm Sunday. Here's a man who comes in being hailed as a king. And then a few days later, they're crying out the words, crucify him. So how does a man go from being uh, adulated to that degree and then being ready to be put to death in, in just a few short days? And it's all because you, we all miss the meaning. Uh, some things don't change because... As long as God and Jesus was doing uh, uh, the physical, meeting the physical needs of the people, everything was fine. He was their God. The minute that the, the, the he stopped and, and he turned the tables and, and started addressing the spiritual kingdom that he was referring to, then the Christ came out to crucify him. Yeah. You see, we must understand that uh, what began on Sunday uh, all started and birthed out of the love of God for each one of us. We can't sit here and, and, and preach the John 3.16 if we don't understand that every step that Christ took was because he loved each one of us. Every teaching that he did on, on Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday was a long day. 
uh, if you look at it. And Tuesday, he goes into the, 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 the great Mount Olive Discourse about the, the end times. And if you walk through the Bible and you look at all the things that happen day in and day out, as you, as you proceed to go on, you know that Jesus also wept. Uh, and he not only taught, but he wept. He was crying over the spiritual condition of, of the people of the time. As you move on, you know that the Passover was also instituted at that time because he would be the Passover lamb. All these steps that Jesus took, all the teaching that he did. And if you read the Bible, if you start in Matthew chapter 21 and you read all the way through, you see everything that happens in the Bible. We don't have time to go over it all tonight, but if you see everything that goes on, you know that it's birthed out of God's love for you and I. Jesus didn't come to scold us and put and throw us under the bus and tell us everything we're doing wrong. He was trying to save us from the penalty of sin that we, that we so rightly deserve. I'm not going to hold you. I want to. I want to get us to the cross, and I want us to understand that every step Jesus took was because that He loved us. You can't trump it. Nobody's going to love you any more than the Lord has loved you, and it is demonstrated. And every step that he took, even if, as, as they were, as you get to Friday, and as they drive the nails in his hand, and as they do all the things, and, and they scourge him, and all the things that they do, he did it all because he loved you and I. You see, we, we can turn Good Friday into Black Friday. I never could figure out why, why Good Friday was called Good Friday, and the, the biggest shopping day of the year was Black Friday. Because I couldn't understand, it, because it didn't make sense. Here's Jesus, here's a man that's being crucified, he's being executed for me. And, um, and oh, I'm told to take my mask off. <laughs> um, and all of that, but yet we call it the great day, Black Friday, when I, in my heart, in my mind, before I understood the love of God, before I understood why he did what he did, um, uh, it, it is easy to, to mistaken that one for the other. But I believe we are uttering the words and as a, my message before we turn this over to our first, uh, first words is don't, don't, don't allow yourself to, to be in the position where you're, you're uttering crucify him. I want you to take this week and each day that goes by. And like I said, we don't have time to analyze every day in its entirety. But look at the, everything that Jesus did, everything that he said in preparation and, and, and preparing us not only for uh, him being the sacrificial lamb, but him also preparing us for the future kingdom. Look at it as, as if God has is, is wrapped his arms around you and loved you every step of the way. Look at it as if God is saying, look, I'm with you every step of the way. I am wrapping my arms around you as I go through this journey and I want you to drop the words crucify him because we've been crucifying him and we haven't stopped. We think that when it, it, it stopped on Easter morning, but we've been crucifying him ever since because we have put other gods before him. And we, every time we put everything before God, it, we're crucifying him. And what I, as we go into this, I want you to not forget the magnitude of what Jesus has done. And that is really my whole point in going through Monday through Thursday or Wednesday, as some have, have stated. But nevertheless, as we go through this, um, as each preacher comes forward, I ask that you take a moment to think of in what ways do these words demonstrate to me how God loves me that much. Amen? Let us Amen. pray. Father God, I thank you for uh, Passion Week. I thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank you that you gave your only begotten Son. And Lord, as, as, we, as we go into this portion, Lord, where we, where we hear those last words, Lord, let's just touch our hearts and minds today. Those that are viewing this uh, from outside sources, Lord, touch their hearts and minds and let them know that you love them as well. That these words are words of love. These words are words of, of hope. And these words are words of promise. They're not the end, they're only the beginning, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to just reveal that to everyone here and everyone that is about to hear. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.